Want entertainment designed just for you? Then check out customizable streaming TV from Xfinity. It makes your life simple, easy, awesome. Xfinity gives you customizable streaming TV options. Enjoy the most free shows anywhere on any device and even access your streaming apps right on your TV with X1. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today to learn more. Restrictions apply. This is Janet Carolison with the Aquarium Radio Network at AquariumRadio.com. Let's see if we can get connected to extraterrestrial radio. TJ Morris ET Radio. I'm trying to get the mic. Radio. Welcome aboard, all you ground troops spinning around smartly on the planet. We're happy to be here. It's a gift to have a life, and we're representing Ascension Centers tonight, and actually Ascension Centers Hawaii, with Janet Carol Lesson and Aquarian Radio tonight. And I'm going to get my studio on here. I had it on, and uh, we're having to do this through studios and web browsers, and it seems to be... Uh, some kind of little competition going on here, but let me see if this Unmuted. is Janet. I see a three four seven number. Hello, is this Janet Carol Hi. Hi, TJ. Hi, Hi Janet. I'm, I'm simulcasting with you, uh, so I don't have the board. You have the board, the master board, and I called in from my show to your show. So to your show. So this is the Ascension Center radio show with Teresa and Janet. Teresa J. Morris and Janet Care Lesson. Um, we have our special co-host tonight, Javier Sandoval, and we have another guest, Mika or Mika Mika, I think. And we're going to talk about whatever comes to mind, but it's around spirituality and consciousness. So this is the uh, Aquarian Radio Network, and our website is AquarianRadio.com. And so we are here simulcasting, and it worked! Yay! I like it when things work. 
Yay! <laughs> this is Janet Snyder to promote Ascension Center Hawaii and Aquarian Radio with TJ Mars ET Radio, and we're welcoming Cosmos Radio Organization tonight with Javier Sandoval. So there's three, and we're going to talk about ET UFO phenomenology, power of three, and hopefully. Uh, Bill M. Tracer, who was uh, normally for the last three years has had Sunday nights with the ACE Metaphysical Institute, ACE Nonprofit Inc., may be showing up tonight. He did last night when I was doing readings. But we're welcoming Javier, and uh, let me punch him on. I'm running the board tonight. Javier, can you hear Janet and TJ? Yeah, yeah. how's it going, Janet? How's it going, TJ? I'm here. Oh, great. Wonderful. It's going great. Especially great now that you've showed up, so we can have the power of three, which TJ is going to tell our listeners what that means. Oh, I am okay. Well, okay. <laughs> In that case, folks, we're going to introduce ourselves. But with the power of three, that is something very, very ancient, you know. And the powers that be and the spirituality paths that we go on. There are many groups, especially in the metaphysical world, and in the Ascension Center. You know, the Ascension Center is your consciousness, but it's attached to the core of all beings, all things. And the knowing, and just like Tesla said, you know, that there was a core, and and he was merely the receiver. And many of us think that way. And the rising awareness of consciousness and the gathering of the universe, we have immediate requirements, and, and we can have a place, a gathering place, of like-kind spirits. You've heard people say kindred spirits. Well, we three have decided we're kindred spirits here on the earth, and these words can direct our future. And the power of three, they've learned, just like in zero-point energy, that the power of three, the point of origin, but you still need two other places usually to guide yourself. And we have two. We have many people that will argue the, the benefits of a pyramid, but we seem to think of that in threes, when you look on a, a one-dimensional flat surface, some say two-dimensional, or even something that looks like a pyramid, you recognize a triangle. So there needs to be a beacon place for energy of like kind to assemble and enjoy fellowship and communication. So that's what we're doing here. Now, you know, people were advertising ET UFO phenomenology and the alien ET UFO synchronicity ESP and the paranormal tonight, and maybe Bill M. Tracer will show up because he wanted to talk a little bit about time travel last night, and it came up in his reading, and he talked to us about his book, and uh, as soon as uh, Mika, our newest uh, member, gets off of work in San Jose, California, she's going to join us. She gets off about 5, and I believe it was now, but she said take her a few minutes to get home, so as Janet has announced... We'll have a new member this year, and we're looking forward to creating 2016. And we're looking at paracons for the paranormal conventions, as I've done for many, many years in the tech. But we're looking at Alien uh, Cosmos Expos, A-C-E, and promoting it doesn't matter where we do them and what state. We're trying to create an organization under the word cosmos, but also alien. And the three of us know that alien civilizations exist. And we're forming this new organization, even though we've been here, Janet and I, on this station and hers for three years. So we're going to work with an assembly of resources and organizations and actually hopefully produce some humans to show up at least annually to for a gathering and illumination and enlightenment with tools and skills and performances and the ascension center is the way that the ETs have taught me to assemble various locations beginning in America so this energy will spread throughout franchising to other countries and the free market until such time that this is assembled organization that we can build a, as a world entity or global entity and uh, it's a win-win situation. It's the world entity, the we, and all the younger kids, especially where Javier's li- list, uh, living in Silicon Valley, they all know how to assemble teams, like for Google and Microsoft and all those on this planet. So we're forming a joint galaxy alliance with the cosmos and the supreme allied command and the galaxy allied commanders and those I work with off planet my husband works with off planet and many of you may be having some opening in what we call the ascension age of what we're calling the shift and the awakening 
So to understand that, we're we're forming this thing, and the entities gave me this, and uh, everybody may be tuning in. And tonight we can talk about we where we were when the flash bulb event happened. That's like your serendipity, synchronicity, aha moment, and when you saw a UFO. And I know that Mika, when she comes on, she was so excited about tonight because she came on and had a reading last night. But Mafia, Mafia, where did I get that from? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know where that word came into my brain. It has nothing to do with the Mafia. <laughs> let's, let's go and let everybody introduce themselves while we're waiting on Mika to come and Bill to show up. And we'll talk about what the world needs to do is focus on the power of three. And we'll get into what all that means, and we'll do roundtable discussions but uh, Janet, why don't you introduce yourself, and then Javier can, and I will. Okay. So go ahead, Janet. Did you say that Bill just showed up? You said that Bill, he just showed up? Not yet. He wanted to show up. He said he would come, and Mika said uh, uh, they were both excited last night, but things can change in 24 hours. <laughs> but Mika did uh, confirm to me three or four hours ago that she would show up. So uh, well, but right now we'll introduce each of us. Okay, and sounds good. Then we'll let so them I'm introduce Janet themselves. Lesson. Okay, so I am Janet Care Lesson, and I am broadcasting live out of Maui, Hawaii, which is where I live with my beautiful husband, handsome husband, Dr. Sasha Lesson, who is an anthropologist specializing in ancient anthropology, and he does um, psychological counseling. He's a, an educator, taught at the universities, uh, the University of Hawaii, um, the university over here, two, two or three different universities on the mainland, et cetera, et cetera. So now we're still doing education. We're, we're educating the world about extraterrestrial presence and disclosure and um, ancient aliens, et cetera, et cetera, ancient through modern. Uh, we're working on a series of books where we're going to take uh, the ancient alien mystery of the Anunnaki back, forward, back in time to the, the part that you always like to talk about before the Anunnaki, and then we're going to go from um, the last that we heard from the Anunnaki, which was around 2150 BC, up to the present time. So who am I? Janet Kier Lesson is an author. I wrote uh, t- co-wrote a couple books with Dr. Lesson on the Anunnaki, Anunnaki False Gods, and Anunnaki Legacy of the Gods. I wrote the first book in a series of books called Dance of the Souls, which is autobiographical. First book of the series called Pierce the Veil. I have another one in the, in the works called uh, The Dragon at the End of Time, and I have a, another book in the works called uh, Nimma, Mother of, of uh, Humanity, which I'm about 150 pages into that one. That I've just, just um, I got just what I do is I set up all of the uh, potential uh, not paragraphs, um, yeah, uh, different sections, and then I flesh them out, and it, it's a pretty good process. But I just have to clear the calendar. And just, so let's see what else. I have wonderful kitties. I have 12 jungle kitties, one sitting right here. She right here go meow periodically. She likes to talk into the radio. She thinks it's a cool thing. And uh, we, we broadcast Aquarian Radio Network with the T.J. Morris ET Cosmos radio system. I'm not sure exactly the name of your network, but we both decided to create a network because we kept um, co we call collaborative broadcasting, and then we also are on many, many, many different shows. So I put all my links to all the shows that I'm on or I'm a part of on AquarianRadio.com. And now we're branching into conferences, and uh, there's many names we're throwing about. Um, Karen Patrick wants to do We Are Disclosure conferences, so I'm working on that. But the uh, I think the more confidence, the better, the better chance we have of waking up humanity to what's going on so we can have a conscious, civilized civilization that respects life and all consciousness and allows every person to live in dignity, beauty, grace, and peace because we have all our basic needs met and we're not stumbling around in Bay Chakra survival mode and, um, you know, living on the street and starving to death. And that leads to, first of all, it's very expensive for any society that's supporting the homeless on some way, be it uh, extra hospital costs or 
uh, extra police costs. It still costs more to have people homeless and on the street than it does to house and feed them. All right, I've said enough. Thank you very much. Back to you, T.J. Morris. Thank you. Bill is in the chat room. He says he's trying to get his self all tuned in. He can't hear us. Uh, Tanika, can you hear us? Lolita, Lady Lola. <laughs> uh, can you hear us out there? Uh, are we having technical difficulty? Uh, I know I can hear Janet and I can hear uh, Javier. Well, I like to call him Javi. It's easier than Javier. And he does ET designs by Javi. And he now represents Cosmos Radio so we can broadcast out of the Sacramento, our, uh, the famous Silicon Valley, which I'm really excited that he represents that area. So let me let him introduce himself as a life coach and author and producer. Go ahead, and then we'll let Bill. Bill will be here. Go ahead. Okay. Turn, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all your listeners and uh my name is Javier Sandoval. I'm here. I live over here in the in San Jose area by Silicon Valley, and I'm actually a, a conference, a UFO conference producer. I also do investigation work, and I usually have you know I have a lot of uh, equipment where I do uh, night vision, where it's military grade night vision. So when I go out in the field, I can see things that you can't normally see with the eye, and it's connected to a video cam, so I can actually record everything that. I catch in night vision, so that that makes it a big plus. Plus, uh, I also I'm a life coach, a little bit clairvoyant, and you know, and uh, basically, uh, basically lived in the Bay Area for all my life, and I, I I do a lot of traveling when I do my uh, investigation work, and I also have uh, another business where I have ET Designs by Hobby dot com, where I sell unique one of a kind jewelry. It's something a little different, and it's very affordable. It's between $20 and $30, everything, so it's more affordable. And I also make custom-made statues that are only made for ET Designs by Hobby.com. So these are the things that I do, and, 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 and I really enjoy doing what I do. It's always fun, and that's why I do the investigation work. When I do my conferences, I want to bring back cutting-edge information where you get the most recent stuff. I also work with ufologists. I also work with speakers, so we share and we share information, we share photos, and so when they have something incredible, they'll give it to me. And when I have, I'll give it to them so they can share it. So we're all we're all together, we're all like a unit. So we like to share the information so we get everything. So the conference, when you come to my conference, you'll probably get something a little different than the other conferences because I go out in the field and I actually catch the stuff. So I really got really good stuff to show. So that's basically in a nutshell what I do. And it's a pleasure being here with T.J. Morris and and, and um, Janet. Uh, Janet, left. Janet, sorry about that. Left sorry, just, left. just left my mic. <laughs> yeah, because this is the, this is the, this is the first day that I work with Janet, so I, I have to get ready. You know, get everything tuned up, and then we got Bill, and then we got. Sure, uh, that's okay. Sure, Janet uh, Lesson and Bill M. Tracer tonight, and we'll have. Nika, it's hard for us to remember everybody's names, and you know I, I, this is sort of off the cuff. He didn't know he was coming on tonight, and I asked him back tonight to represent Cosmos Radio <laughs> Organization, which is an umbrella organization for all the people we're going to be working with, including Bill M. Tracer, who represents Ace Metaphysical Institute. So thank you, Javi. Let me get Bill on here. Hi, Bill M. Tracer. Would you like to introduce yourself in our group of the last three years and how the author thing works with us? Well, hey, uh, TJ. Uh, excuse me. Yes, I am Bill M. Tracer, <laughs> and both uh, an author and an artist, fr- freelance artist, doing uh, uh, a lot of work with uh, fractal art as well as just abstract stuff. And like I said, in the past I've I've also done a lot of uh, cover art for uh, books, uh, science fiction and fantasy in particular, and um, also for some uh, comic books and e-books. There was a comic book company I did did some covers for that was um, called Shanda Fantasy Arts, and they did a a comic book called uh, Shanda the Panda. And it was like a 
comics about these people, uh, you know, anthropomorphic, you know, uh, animal type, a panda, you know, Shando was actually a panda, but, uh, and that was a, a um, well, <clears throat> they were popular for a while, but, but unfortunately, uh, due to some health problems, the publisher had to, uh, had to cease publications on that, but uh, they, they did, uh, I, I did their, the last cover for Shanda, um, one of their annual uh, books, a uh, collection of several other comic books throughout the year that was, uh, you know, put together in a book. And then I also did a cover for uh, one of their other uh, publications, which was called uh, Katmandu. It was a uh, basically an idea of, uh, again, anthropomorphic, uh, but they were cat people. <laughs> so imagine people, but with cat faces, you know. And... Uh, the human body types, but well, they still had their fur all over their body too, like a cat does. But they were human body shaped with with uh, with the feline heads. And in the case of Kathmandu, they were like a like a Native American tribe that was like that. And um, they were very imaginative, you know. And it was it was kind of fun to do uh, some covers for them. Uh, but like I say, that that publishing company, uh, Shanda Fantasy Arts, says no longer in business. The, the uh, back issues are still available online. If you actually did a web search on uh, on Shanda Fantasy Arts and on either of those titles, Shanda the Panda or uh, Katmandu, I'm sure you can find uh, find those comics still available uh, for you know, like I said, the older editions. But um, and like I said, I did the last cover. For each of those, <laughs> I was actually they had accepted another cover for what was going to be the 37th issue of a Katmandu, but uh, they had they go like I said they, the publisher she was having some serious health problems, and uh, they had to close down. So, um, but that was that was a nice nice kind of different sort of thing that I that I did for a little while there doing the covers for them, <clears throat> and also. Uh, in addition to uh, to writing, I I also do uh, I've done my own covers pretty most for the most part, but of the the books I've written uh, the uh, first was a nonfiction book and as we've discussed many times on the show, uh, will the internet achieve sentience? Uh, posing that question of whether or not the possibility that this cobbled together network of kind of an artificial brain you might say that we call the internet that it might at some point achieve sentient and become a conscious and self-aware. And, and what would that mean? What would that be like? So in that book, I speculate all about that. And then um, the other two books I've got published are uh, science fiction stories, uh, To Mars to Stay, To Mars to Die, about uh, a mission to Mars, and uh, in which, you know, not only do things not quite go exactly right, but you know it has some interesting alien stuff going on as well in in that story, uh, where where the main character finds an alien artifact on Mars that uh, that begins to affect his mind. So it's a very interesting uh, uh, play on on or kind of an examination almost of how a descent into insanity. Uh, how how that could might happen and how that would uh, how that would affect uh, the particular Mars mission <clears throat> and then uh, most recently my my most recently book uh, a published book is uh, Tripping on Woodstock in which a uh, the main character uh, uh, Phil Stewart is uh, kidnapped from the present day and taken back in time through you know, by kind of a rogue time traveler who uh, drops him off at Woodstock, 1969, and uh, and then basically abandons him there. <laughs> and, uh, and he has to, you know, ex- he experiences that entire weekend firsthand. And uh, I did extensive research for that story, uh, both in uh, about the kind of things that were happening at Woodstock and, and a lot of that, as well as uh, uh, a lot of t- a time travel researching in the in the various uh, aspects of time travel and uh incorporated all that into that story and basically that's uh, 
that's me in a nutshell. Uh, all my stuff is available at Amazon. You just do a web, uh, an author search at Amazon on um, on my name, Bill M. Tracer, and it will uh, it'll show you uh, all the stuff I've got published there. And both well, available you, as Bill. print book and e-books. You can tell that Bill runs our authors club, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's all about books, <laughs> but also beautiful fractal art that is very ET UFO yeah. phenomenology uh, synchronized in the artwork with the fractal art. And uh, there's a huge uh, history behind uh, Mandelbrot. And uh, would you just mention his name, uh, and then we'll get on with the show. I'm still yeah, waiting the, on the Wall Mandelbrot back in the 1970s. Table. He actually was the one who discovered and coined the phrase fractal. Uh, he, he came up with that. It's basically, it's the geometry of fractured shapes. Uh, you know, not, not just your basic squares and triangles and circles, but instead it's the shapes of nature, you know, <clears throat> the, uh, the branching patterns of a tree or the meanderings of a river. Those kind of patterns can actually be, uh, with fractal geometry, you can, you can finally actually measure those things in a way that, much more accurately than uh, than any other other way. You know, mathematics in terms of geometry, for the most part, has always been about these very regular shapes. You know, but this is about irregular shapes and uh, and about the shapes of nature. So uh, that's what fractals are really all about. And the beauty of them is that you know it, it was discovered that if you take a fractal formula and you do what they call iterate it, that is, you just you feed a number into it, and then you calculate the result, then you take that result and feed it right back into the same formula and do it again and again and again, multiple iterations over and over and over. And doing that, you, you actually are in ultimately plotting the points of a, of a grid on your, you know, like on your computer screen, and it will create these amazing images. You get these, this extraordinary... Uh, Infinite, you know, it really is. I mean, you, you just explore it. You know, you pan to the one side or the other, or up or down, and zoom in and out, and and you find all different kinds of intricacies in in these imagery that can be created uh, with fractal geometry. And um, and it's something that I I just have spent an enormous amount of time exploring. And that's what it really is like. You're, you're exploring this this weird graphic domain this, this in the computer and and when i look for of course as an artist i look for something that's not uh, pleasing to the eye a kind of composition that 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 works and i find those compositions in various parts of the fractals and i blend the layers together to create greater depth to it and all and and it's just uh, amazing the uh, extraordinary diversity of imagery that you can generate from this, and uh, and you know, like I say, with the eye of an artist, I uh, I like to manipulate these things and play with them with the various filters and, and layering effects and blending effects uh, using Photoshop, and then my end result is my uh, my abstract art that is uh, well. Sometimes you know, quite mind blowing. You know, <laughs> the, uh, you look at that, you know, and you just like you're just awed by some of these things that, that emerge out of this process. So, uh, and that is kind of my goal. I, I, I'm, my goal is to to get the viewer to look at it and, and be awed. You know, so <clears throat> I feel it's successful if someone looks at one of my works of art and says, the first thing they say is awesome. <laughs> then I feel like I've succeeded. You know. <laughs> So, uh, uh, by the way, um, speaking of that, if any of our um, viewers would like to see some of this, um, I have a, uh, a, a blog that I've been putting together now at a website called Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y, Weebly.com. If you want to look that up, um, the, the, the name of the, of the blog is A Creative's Quest. So just A and then creatives, C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E-S, and then quest, Q-U-E-S-T, a creatives quest dot weebly dot com. You go to that site 
and um, you will see the most recent blog entry, which was from last month, but I am going to be getting a new one out there soon. I, I've been kind of ill lately, and so now that I'm recovering, I've got to get back to work. <laughs> but uh, scroll down, and you'll see various examples of some of my fractal art, as well as some of the art I've done with 3D computer graphics. And uh, so I've done I've worked in all of that area. That's a creatives quest. Dot Weebly dot com. That's the that's the address, and um, you can see several examples of, of like I said. Now, why my... I brought that up and asked him to comment on that, folks, is Mendelbrot. If you're using a cell phone right now mm-hmm. with ET technology and how we got all the things that you're using these days, it's not a coincidence. And inside your cell phone, mm-hmm. we use. Some of the mental brought fractals, believe it or That's not. That's right. The yeah. actual antenna that is built inside those little the, the, your, your smartphone and your cell phones now. The way the reason we don't have to have an antenna sticking out the end of the phone anymore, like they did when the first uh, when the first uh, mobile phones came out. You know, they were like the, the people called them the bricks because they were about the size yeah. of a brick and they had an antenna <laughs> sticking the out the end. You know? That's <laughs> well, right. Well, the reason we don't have to have that they antenna stick. The end anymore is because Mandelbrot figured out that that you can you can actually make an even smaller antenna with more surface area using fractal geometry. So that's exactly what's going on inside our cell phones is these little bitty fractally designed antenna. They help us pick up those signals without having to have a big bulky mobile phone anymore. So and I'd like great. to share that for Javi. That is right. So there you go, folks. I know a lot of this may sound like, oh, gosh, this is too much. I don't need to know this. Well, actually, you do. It's just that someone's explaining something from an artist or an author's uh, vision or perspective. But for Javi and, and Janet to get their attention, I will tell them that the ET UFOs that they may or may not have seen, because we're going to discuss we were where when the flash bulb event happened? Where were you when you saw a UFO? Well, we're going to talk about that tonight, but when you were there, we call that now phenomenology. And at the same time, if you think about it, fractal art, when we're up there in a spacecraft and the light catches everything, mm-hmm. still it's like fractal art. It's a, it's a form of way putting things together and the way the light reflects off the sun. And well, exactly. Go, well, you know, it, the yeah. matter of fact is ahead. that even before uh, Dr. Mandelbrot actually discovered and, and 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 named fractal geometry, it already existed because it is the geometry of nature itself. Like I said before, the meandering patterns of rivers, the branching patterns of trees and the roots, all of those those things, even the contours of mountain chains, all of these things are governed by fractal geometry. So, you know, it's the actual geometry of nature, and always has been, you know, (laughs) ever since nature even came into existence, you know. Fractals are at the very foundation of our reality. And uh, and I think that's very exciting because the fact that, that we have begun to discover this little secret about these things. You know, before we thought these these patterns were just random. You know, we didn't know that they're actually governed instead they're not random. They're governed by these fractal formulas. God is a great mathematician, <laughs> and uh, and yes, we're just beginning is. to discover these things. He, she. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me turn the show back over to Aquarian Radio and Janet Carroll Lesson. I don't sure. see Mika yet, Janet, and we were going to do a panel discussion oh, whether we'll each person. This... <clears throat> okay. All right. We'll, just well Janet, uh, whoever shows is meant to be here, and it's all perfect in the divine plan. So what I'd like to ask yeah. everybody um, is perhaps we don't have a topic. We just kind of assembled, and uh, TJ was the coordinator of all of us assembling here in the uh, hyperspace. So what would you like to talk <laughs> about today? <laughs> and, well, uh, I put see. on my show, my billboard has got, uh, let me tell you what my billboard is, what I, I advertised so much to live for. We can make a difference. Teresa J. Morris, Janet Carolesson, Javier Sandoval, Bill M. Tracer, and Mika Anoya. 
share a roundtable panel discussion. Now, we share that the ACE Historical Researcher's Accuracy, because we represent ACE, ACE for Ascension Center Education tonight, but also ACE for the Alien Cosmos Expos, and the ACE, and then my company is T.J. Morris, doing business as ACIR, which is Ascension Cosmos Internet Radio. And the Ascension Center with the original, uh, I got an ET sign, like a fractal sign, for my logo. And you guys are all representing the ETs out there in cyberspace, are out there in the cosmos tonight. And Janet, myself, Cosmos Radio, Javier, and Bill for the ACE Metaphysical Institute, all these are groups in a way that the ETs have assembled and connected us together. So we're conducting an annual gathering between 2016 and 2023, and to the sixth sun and the fifth earth new history. We're rewriting history here. So the ACE Society shares the annual Paracon and the Midwest. Para is for paranormal, con for convention, and the Midwest. And we also share the ACE, ACO, ACR, AMI. AMI is Ancient Mysteries International era cop or era like time cop and a lot of this tonight we weren't sure that janet was going to be here because she just got off a plane going to a convention and javier and her met i think they've met before but this this thing with my company is all working together for this tonight and bring it all together with bill from the last three years in a author's club so janet that we're sort of creating a hodgepodge which javi saw how all this with our ascension psychics from last night's show could all work together so i guess we were going to invite mika she may show up the second hour but i put on here a dot we were where when the flash bub event happened where it when you saw a ufo but you know that's something to get everybody warmed up for the panel discussion and i there, i didn't ask questions like i usually do but i say associate guides for 2016 are chosen for the Ascension Psychics, Alien Contact, which you guys know we have Saturday night, Era Cop, which is Thursday night, Time Travelers, which Bill's going to bring to us hopefully again on Sunday night, Time Travelers, which is the Ace Metaphysical Institute. So on my board on uh, Blog Talk Radio, you can see Ace Metaphysical Institute, which uh, Bill and I started with Ace Nonprofit Inc. about three years ago. Ancient Mysteries International, which is AMI, uh, which also matches AMI for Ace Metaphysical Institute with Bruce Cunningham, and theirs is going to help on Thursdays with uh, Katrina. And then Divine Expos, Ascension Psychics. And this is something we're combining with the Divine Expo, which uh, Janet is an author uh, and a researcher under the Zechariah Sitchin hat in the Anunnaki's where the Divine Expos fall under his book, Divine Encounters. So we all have a piece and the Power of Three Conference for 2016, and we're going to do these. It's seven beyond life into our psychic readings, which we're going to bring all together. Used to, we couldn't do conferences with psychics and UFOs. They didn't want to bother to put them all together, but we're going to be doing all that. And they just came back from one in Sacramento, uh, UFO Con, and uh, they had UFOs in one room and a Halloween and psychics, and a couple of psychics showed up. So this is a new thing, folks, in this era of time, era cop for time cop. We just say era cop. So everybody's represented tonight, but where were you when your flash bub, your big aha moment, you're going to hear flash bub on the breakthrough for Ron Howard and Brian Grazer now on breakthrough on television. But where were you when you saw your first UFO? And I was planning on letting Mika... You know, but she was going to be number five. But we can do this with four people, Janet. If you want to what, do this and start, it gets everybody warmed up. That? TJ, could you go back what? and say what Ron Howard is doing? You're saying breakthrough. Is did he see a UFO? Am I misunderstanding what you're saying here? Breakthrough for him and the mind is a new television show. It's amazing about. Uh, I don't have the research. Uh, this is where I need somebody like uh, Bill. He's very analytical and a very much an analyst. But I, I'm sorry, Janet, I don't have the back story okay, on you that, so you'll I have to get it you for yourself. It. <laughs> no, okay, I just know so breakthrough. Gonna, I saw it. So we're going to talk about uh, Janet, um, 
Where were you yeah. when you saw, we'll start with that, to get everybody warmed up to a panel. This is Javier's first panel. You and Bill know we've been doing these for years. It was your idea. And you'd give us about five minutes. And I told Javier, everybody right. knows Janet leads panels. So, Janet, where <laughs> were you when you <laughs> saw your first UFO? Where were you? I, I was on the UFO. Yeah, I guess I did. I think I did see from the outside because I know what it looks like. But I was uh, four years old, and I was teleported on board a, I call it a mothership. It was very divine, loving energy. I was greeted by all these uh, beings which had no physical form. They were interdimensional. They were very kind. Of, I mean, they were rather angelic in their energy. They re, re, they were welcoming me back. I had been there before. Or perhaps I'm a part of their group. Uh, and then they took me to a theater where they showed me 24 different multiverses, the future potential histories of the planet or futures of the planet, where we could go. They're like lanes of the highway. They're like multiverses. And they started showing me the, the worst case scenario. The planet blew up. And then they went to a scene where the planet was still all one, that there was a lot of destruction, very little that was uh, still together and very little life. Then they shifted that to another scene where there was more life and less destruction. They kept showing me 24 different potential future history possibilities until they showed me several utopian ones where things turned all right, out all right. There was one where it was just, Nothing left to do. I rejected that one. And so about the third from the last scenario they showed me was pretty utopian, but there was enough for everybody to do to make it interesting. It wasn't all done. And so when I chose that as my uh, timeline upon which I would traverse this lifetime, they returned me back to my home. Oh, my cat got out. Okay. And I think I'm done. I'm going to try to get my cat back in. (laughs) Go ahead, next person. Thank you. That's the next person would be Javier. Javier, where were you? Because everybody tunes into this ET UFO energy, but somehow they have this feeling that they've been called to our UFO ET community. But where were you, Javier, in your mind when you saw your first UFO? It doesn't have to be in person. It could have been on television or whatever. But however you started knowing what a UFO was. But where were you? A light bulb goes off in your head. It's like over your head or in your spirit. It's like, you know, what happened? Tell everybody what happened to you. Okay. Well, it was over 10 years ago. And, you know, just to clarify, everybody has different types of experience in different places Feeling some ships, some outside, some in cars. So, and not every ET experience is the same. When I had mine, I thought everybody experienced the same thing because I didn't have a bad experience. But, but when I went to a UFO conference, I found out it was t- I was totally wrong. So it's always good to educate yourself to understand more about the phenomenon. But anyway, well, over ten years ago, I was in Baja, California. That's over in Mexico, right by Tijuana. That's not close to San Diego area. And I was living there. I lived. I was born and raised here all my life, but I, I moved over there. I wanted some change. So I wanted to experience some different culture. So I went over there and lived for 10 years. And during that period of time, uh, you know, I, I had an experience. And when I see my first UFO after my experience, I'd say uh, maybe a couple of days later, I was going up the hill with a friend of mine. And I was in my pickup truck, so we're going up this this steep hill. So when you go up the steep hill, your car's facing upwards toward the sky. So when we're going to go up the steep hill, I see my first UFO, and it was it was really impressive because it was during the daytime, not at night, and it, le- it seemed like somebody had polished the whole top of it because you could see it was so low and so clear. And it was like, wow. Then that's when I knew, because I wasn't even into this, you were supposed to be. You would have told me back then how I said, ah, yeah, they wear tin hats. Like, you know, the typical stereotype that we all do because we we don't experience it. But when you start finding out that credible people, intelligent people, doctors, lawyers, firemen, police, engineers, uh, artists, 
start seeing all this, we're, we're, you know, and very credible people. Well, they're not all crazy. They're very highly intelligent. It's just that it's been, it's been suppressed for so long. Now we can talk about it, and now we're not that crazy because it's becoming mainstream now, where mm-hmm. everybody can accept it now. And now it's not it's not so bad to talk about it. I believe we should understand it. That'll make us less afraid. If we can understand the phenomenon or, or educate ourselves a little bit, we won't be scared anymore. What it is is the unknown scares us, or we never talked about it, or it was never programmed. It wasn't part of my program. So that's what's happening now that people are, are opening up and expressing how they feel. And, and sometimes you have an experience and you hold it for 20 years. And then when I tell them I'm a UFO researcher, they start crying their tears. And they say, man, I haven't been able to talk to nobody about this for 10 years, not even my husband, you know, or, or, or my mom or dad or my brother. And then they tell me because I can understand them. I'm an experiencer, so I went through it. So I can tell I can tell when somebody's had experience and when they're not. Not only that, but as an experiencer, I can almost guarantee you in one room that people that haven't had experience, you put one experiencer in there, I'll find them. Most most people that have experience have some kind of a genetic. They've changed it somehow that we're, we're like magnets because. Uh, Janet can tell you, when we do these UFO conferences, it's like a whole family gets together. We're like having a blast, having fun, having a party, and everybody loves each other because the energy is a, is amazing. And this is true. This is you know, not just to, just to tweet your horn, but you can go to any conference, UFO conference, and the people are nice. Psychic people are very nice because they understand, and, and, and their energy is so different, and we all can feel each other's energy. It's amazing. So that's where I had my first experience in Baja, California, going up the hill, and I've seen an amazing, amazing uh, little flying saucer there. Yeah. Thank you. Very good for your first panel. Yeah, and uh, we try to limit it to five minutes. Uh, was that within the five minutes? <laughs> is that when we're at, the, at these conferences, it's like a huge family reunion. And you start developing mm-hmm. deep friendships with people, and then we we all gather at the next conference, <laughs> and we are growing and learning and expanding. And I think we're being we're effective. I know it seems like oh, it's just so much, uh, but we are being effective because if you look back just you know four or five years, mm-hmm. we're in a completely different world than before we started doing these conferences. We are having some kind of change on the grid. Okay, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but go ahead, uh, TJ. I'm, I'm sorry, I had to try to find my cat, but she just said, nani, nani, boo, boo, I'm not coming in, so hopefully she'll knock on the door and come back in. She's my house. Cat. Yes, cat, knock on the door. <laughs> on, Kitty, knock we on love the our door. animals. If my dog I escapes. Go ahead. Okay, Next Bill, uh, where were you when the light bulb went off in your head, your big aha, do you remember seeing a UFO or a child? Because I've got so many folks, it'll take me a thousand years to tell you all of them. But I'll I'll do start off the panel, but we're doing my little first one. But go ahead, Bill. What do you remember? What when the, when were you, where were you when the flash bulb event happened for you? The big aha, flash bulb event. The big aha. Well, I guess you know uh, my big aha probably was when I was a teenager. But I know that, uh, or, or I feel confident, I had experiences before that during my early childhood because you know, I don't specifically remember, but my mother used to tell me these stories of that, that I would be telling her. You know, She said when I was like really little, four and five years old, I was constantly telling her about this friend of mine she thought of as an imaginary friend, and I, I said his name was Timmy. And he lived in the castle in the sky. And every now and then they, they would come, the castle would come, and uh, and they would take me in the castle. And, you know, that was the way I described it as a child. And um, I don't specifically remember any of that, you know, myself. I, mean, I, I don't have those memories. But, uh, I mean, I guess they're there, probably buried deep inside of me. But uh, <clears throat> the um, when I was... Uh, in my young adulthood, I uh, I was having an experience of some uh, some very uh, difficulty with insomnia and uh, what my uh, what my doctor ultimately called night anxiety. 
And um, he suggested that I go through uh, hypnoregression therapy. And I did. And from that hypnoregression therapy, there were, uh, one of the sessions ultimately led to uh, me seeing memories of things that, I, you know, again, I don't specifically remember except through that regression therapy. And um, well, one of those was from when I was 11 years old when um, <clears throat> that night, what, this is what I specifically remember. That night, I went to bed. The next morning when I woke up, now, there was directly, diagonally across the block from where I, at this time I was living in a very small town, and the, this block was the last block at the edge of town. So our house was on one corner, and then on the opposite corner was a big red barn. I mean, you know, your, your traditional, you know, Big barn, and that 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 barn had burned down to the ground that night. Uh, so when I woke up the next morning, I looked out the window. I, I, my my bed was such that I laid right next to a window with my head. I could look out that window and look directly, diagonally across that block to where that barn was, and I saw all I could see was a pile of ash and you know burnt boards uh, and that kind of thing. And so <clears throat> it was a real mystery because. The night before, when it burned down, everybody else woke up. Everybody had the lights on. There were people out in the yards. You know, uh, you know, mother said that, and dad said that. You know, that there was just all kinds of people that didn't understand why it was that I slept through it all. I never even woke up <laughs> throughout all that, with all the ruckus and, and the fire and everything going on. But uh, when, we, when we did that, that uh, hypnoregression therapy. And this is another thing, just incidentally I want to mention, that there were several times, even before that, I do remember on many occasions, in the middle of the night when everybody else was asleep, unlatching the screen on that window next to my bed and, and crawling out the window and going outside. But what I don't remember is what I did after that, what I did when I got outside. I have no memory of that, except... This regression therapy they, they, that night, supposedly, what this is what it came through that was that I, I went out the window, and I went toward that barn, and above that barn, I saw this your your, your basic classic shape flying saucer, basically hovering directly over the barn, and it seemed that at some point the it started to accelerate upward. And as it did so, some sort of sparks came off of it, and it seemed like that was what ignited the barn, and and that I just ran back to the house and, and crawled back in bed, and, and somehow I just, I just like, I don't know, maybe it was some kind of trauma that caused me just to go into this deep sleep, and and again, just like I said, sleep through all or, all of it, you know. And that was what the regression therapy revealed. And the, the, I felt like there was more that happened, but I don't know what it was. You know, that, that regression therapy only only brought out bits and pieces of that story, whatever it was. But that was basically what uh, what I would call my what I now would call my <laughs> one of my earliest experiences of that sort. I've always been attracted to the unexplainable, the the, the things that are mysterious and enigmatic and so um even as a as, as a young child after i first learned to read i was reading uh books about you know like brad steiger <laughs> that kind of stuff that he wrote and and things about you know about mysterious things about ufos but just right away i mean as a very young person i was i was reading those things and just absorbing all that information so uh, there's always been, for as long as I can remember, uh, an attraction to those kinds of things, trying to solve those mysteries or at least get some clues <laughs> about those mysteries in life and the strange and unexplainable things. Well, thank you. I appreciate okay. that. Folks, if you come to our uh, events annually, we're going to be creating for 2016 through 2023 at least 
We'll be discussing these things. We'll probably have a room, and we will start the new newbies. We're going to call it Ufology 101. We're going to have a room where we're going to have you come in, and we're going to start just like today with me, Javi, and Janet, and Bill for the first time sharing where were you when the flash bub event happened, meaning the big aha. The, you, you know, if you follow comics or newspapers, you see this big light bulb over somebody's head. And the second question is when you saw a UFO. And that's the way I wrote it tonight. So you can embed it and grab it if you have your own companies or websites or uh, work in the UFO business or whatever. But there's so many people out there providing uh, various nonprofit organizations and uh, different groups, and uh, they'll well, take this show tonight and embed it. Where were you? Okay. Well, the you know Janet says I'm one of the few people that has uh, was allowed to come in with full memory intact, and she and I have worked together for a long time. And uh, somebody just came on, so that's probably Mika. And uh, we'll just say that. Uh, this is the one I first recorded for UFO Digest years ago, and I had explained my life, but people didn't know how to take me, even seven or eight years ago with me coming out. And I had gone over to Roswell and all this and, uh, you know, to let them know I'd been an investigator. So a lot of people think I'd just have been doing this like my whole life, you know, when they meet you. But no, when I was little, we weren't allowed to talk about this stuff in the early 50s, folks. So when I came in, I came in remembering and having memories, and then some I didn't. And that's a very curious thing. So I guess that's why I'm doing these shows now. But at one time, it was three or four, I can't tell you, 53 or 54, I just know that my sister, I think it was 54, because Brenda had just been born, because I know I was jealous of the baby. <laughs> and she was a little bald-headed Brenda Kinsada. And uh, I had to go out and play by myself, and my girlfriend next door, Kathy, was gone. I've given you more details than I've ever given it, even in my articles, because we can do that tonight, because that's the kind of show we got. And uh looks like Mika's finally here, but uh, I'll bring her on right after my story. I left my mommy's house on South 7th Street, I believe it was 1954, I was like three or four, let's see, I was born 12, 26, 51. So let's count, folks. 52, I was one. 53, I was two. 54, she was born in October. I know she'd been born. So that would be 54, she was born, I believe. And then uh, it was either 54 or 55. But I was three or four. I, I can't, you know, I like, I'm an exact investigator, folks. I like to have, where were you, exact date, right? Well, I, I can't really pin it to that date. But I'll tell you, during that time, three or four, I went two doors over, and there was no house yet on South 7th. There were houses, and the, you know how you build tracks down our street. If you can picture in a subdivision, it was a subdivision. And this was a field at that time, and it was between where I lived and where I went to the first grade. And it was across the street where it's the elementary school. But on this, uh, it was uh, – I remember the day like it was yesterday in my little child's mind, even though I'm going to be 64 – so about 60 years ago, <laughs> uh, 60 years ago, I went down to the field. I was feeling far, sorry for myself. I wanted Mommy to take the baby and put it in the paper bag, where you, it's a brown paper bag, and take it back to the grocery store, she says. <laughs> take the baby back. We don't need it. So I was, you know, my little girlfriend next door, uh, Kathy, I believe she had to go to school. She was a couple years older than me. And so I was all alone, okay, and I went to the field in a very bright light, very sunny. I remember it was a spring, like it was like kite day, April or May. And uh, I don't know why you can remember the emotions and the feeling, but I can remember the wind. I can remember the sunny day. I'm sure you guys have looked up on a cloudy day. There were beautiful white clouds and a sun. And I remember looking up, and I can sort of remember taking my little girl hand and putting it over my eyes in this brig light. And they took me. I was taken. They were like literally what they call taken. And introduced to my family, and I wanted to stay with them. And they said, no, you've got to go back <laughs> and stay with you. But I don't like my, my the baby. I don't want to stay. They said, no, you've got to stay. And uh, I, that's basically the memories I have 
was meeting my family, and I knew that was my family. But they said, well, this is your earth family like. I mean, I can't remember the exact words. I don't know if it was ESP. I can't tell you if they were speaking English. I can't. I, I was a baby, a, a little girl, but I knew that I'd been before. I knew that. And I knew they were my family. I knew that. And uh, I remember they sent me back down, and I remember they put me to sleep. But before they did, I got a quick glimpse up there looking, squinting my eyes with my eyes the same way it started. They put me back down, and I remember seeing myself. Okay, now this is hard for you to envision, but a little girl, but I had the ability from being an E.T., DNA enhanced in this lifetime, knowing it, E.T. hybrid, of being able to be Satori or in my body and out of it at the same time. And I go on to learn to do that when I die twice later, and I go on to have children, and they can do it too. And it's very much like remote viewing or being in the body but not of it, or being in the world but not of it. And I believe that was the gift they gave me, that, yes, I was born on earth like everybody else. Yes, I had a human body. But I also had that dual uh, that we study, the black box of being able to be in the box and observe it, which most people, if you study science, they can't do that. Okay, because it's a long story physics, but study quantum physics. <laughs> but basically, that was, and I have a whole life of this, okay? But it gave me the presence of knowing and seeing myself as a little girl with her little body put to sleep. It's just like I'm watching a movie. And throughout my life, I've had that continual support of my ET family, knowing I am here, I am being in the world, but not of it. So that's my first one, and they get even better than that. But let's go on to the next person on our panel. Is this a uh, can he, uh What did I say, Mika? Is this Mika? Yeah, this is Mika. Hi, Mika, folks. We have her name up there. We've told you she may show up. This is yes. our newest player, our newest panel of our discussion, and uh, I told people you may show up, so welcome. Thank you for coming the second hour. Uh, with Mika, there's so many of my fr friends and family and, and social networkers and people that have listened to me for years around the world and other countries, but would you introduce yourself? Just tell people what you feel comfortable about, and then we're going to let you talk about when your flash bub moment went on when you saw your first UFO. But sort of introduce yourself, please. Okay. Um, my name is Mika, and uh, um, I don't know where to start. Um, as far as the UFO goes, and I was able to watch a US UFO when I was about a seven years old, and uh, it was just bright, bright orange mm -hmm. that um, looks like an orange sherbet, and uh, um uh, my mom like and orange my sherbet ice it. cream, right? Bright, bright orange ice cream, light. yeah. Bright, very bright. Okay. And uh, um, it was so close. It was so close that it kind of scared us. And uh, um, it, 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 three of us still remember. And uh, around that time that, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, in my hometown, there's a lot of UFO up here. Uh, my sister researched it after years and years, and he went, she went back and researched around that year that we saw the UFO. And I guess around that year in my hometown, was a lot of people saw the UFO. And uh, um, I don't know if anybody saw that close, but it was it was close. It was very very close. And uh, um, and I was trying to go get my um, uh, my sister was trying to get my dad, and and then just disappeared. Boom, nothing. And, uh, I mean, that big orange, uh, bright orange just shut it off. I mean, it was just, and then there was nothing there. But, um, and then when I was age 14, I had this uh, very uh, ghost-like experience that I almost, just the spirit was trying to take me into the wall of my house. And it happened almost every night. And I was so scared that, uh, um, you know, and then I also experienced that this, something that was trying to take my spirit out of my body. And uh, I could just, um, my spirit will sit, my, you know, and from it, it, will, it will remove from my, my body and then I will sit 
and I look my, I mean, I turn it back, and then I'm just, my body is just slipping there. And uh, um, from that, that was age 14. From that, then, I started having the sixth sense. And uh, um, and I um, subconsciously I, I knew that I could uh, you know feel and hear the it's it's not a human it's the um, now now that I know that it was spirit that uh, will communicate with me and uh, and then for the last couple of years then I'm pretty I'm very in tune and uh, I'd be able to communicate with spirit and uh, um, sometimes the angels if you call it, and, uh, um, yeah, they're able to communicate more frequently. And, uh, yeah, so here I am. Thank you. Thank you, You're Mika. Welcome. Very yeah. first time, folks. She's been on radio other than me doing a reading for her yesterday, and Mika was born in Japan. I have many friends in Japan, and she was only seven years old with her mother and her sister. And then she came on, and they moved to Oregon, I guess, and then she's moved down to San Jose. And uh, let me let uh, Javi and Janet and Bill have a chance to say hi to you. Uh, Janet, you want to go first and, and introduce yourself to Mika? One second. Um, okay, yes, I'm unmuted. Hi, Mika. Welcome to the show. Good Hello. There's a voice, and to get to know you. Um, hope you come back again, but uh, we're in the middle of the show, so thank you for coming on board. Oh, thank you. Avi? Janet's yeah, in Hawaii, going? by the way. Janet's in Hawaii. So. Okay. Yeah, Javi? Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Mika, ahead. I met Mika last night on the radio, and, um, we, you know, it's kind of really interesting because, we, you know, it's hard to find people that live close to you, so it's just a lot of things just bizarre. So it was kind of neat. It's a kind of neat thing. But anyway, welcome to Cosmo Radio, uh, Mika. Thank you. Bill? Bill? Well, Okay. It's good to meet you, Mika. I'm glad you're with us and uh, look forward to uh, growing together. Yeah, (laughs) definitely, definitely, definitely. I I can't, yeah, I'm just so excited. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, like I said, last Uh couple of years and uh, my, my, uh, I mean, you know, intuitive skills being developing like crazy and uh, Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just, so, um, you know, I mean, it's 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 scary to the point of like it's it's getting so uh, intuitive that um, that uh, um, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I I can't wait to uh, share my ability to other people so that you know um, if I can um, able to um, help any other way to uh, other people who need the uh, um, the help from a spirit and yeah, that's what I'm here for. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. And believe it or not, you're being broadcast in Hawaii yeah. and Kentucky. And then people around the world can be- come back and find the archives. And we'll make sure that you have a way to find this. So this will be forevermore. This is sort of a, a little uh, point as, uh, in history. And we're sharing it tonight. And Mika is typical of the people we're here to assist. And she's been a part of this world. And what we're doing is opening up the world to a place in time where you know that things may not be exactly as you think they were. But tonight we're doing ET UFO phenomenology, the power of three as a panel, and the alien ET UFO synchronicity. And we're going to talk a little bit now with everybody, with ESP and the paranormal world that we're all creating. But you know the world isn't like we thought it was, was it, growing up? And yet many of us had to pretend to be quiet and not think what we were thinking. (laughs) And it's a lot of things that science fiction is written about, isn't it? And we're not the first. There were many people before us, and we're just on – Janet and I were talking earlier before the show of so many people that came and went in our life, including this was the year we lost Mr. Spock. And, Janet, would you like to address that little thing before we get into the ESP for us? Sure. Uh, 
Well, the, the Star Trek era was very important for consciousness or elevation of consciousness and evolution of consciousness because it taught us that extraterrestrials can be sentient, conscious, more than the blob, more than some kind of monster that was trying to invade and conquer and take us over. Mr. Spock was the first intelligent extraterrestrial besides um, Michael Rennie in The Day the Earth Stood Still, who said uh, Platu Barada Nikto, and was the uh, was the, the other one. That was in 1951. So from 51 to 1966, September 66, we had nothing but, um, you know, the day of the cryptids and takeover movies and et cetera, et cetera. And then along came Gene Roddenberry, and he introduced Mr. Spock, who gave it a whole other flavor that it would not have had if it, were, if it wasn't for Leonard Nimoy. And Leonard Nimoy uh, invented the, um, the Spock salute, Live Long and Prosper, and he totally immersed himself into that process of becoming an intelligent extraterrestrial that, of course, was uh, Captain Kirk's best friend, the second-in-command of the Federation starship, the USS Enterprise, we had a whole cosmology of what is the potential for humanity's venture into space. Is there, I think what I've discovered at the Sacramento conference, you know, was a co-producer of, is that um, the Star Trek story was based on a whistleblower. I don't know the man's name, but apparently this whistleblower wrote a book back in the 60s about his experiences on board the craft in, as part of the Federation, and that became uh, the basis for the Star Trek story because Gene Roddenberry was friends with this man who t- told this story. Now, T.J. Morris, uh, maybe not this show, but in other shows, or maybe later down the line, will tell you about her experiences on board a um, military huge um I, you don't call it a, a mothership; you call it something else. But anyway, um, we call it the flagship. It's more of a, <laughs> the flagship, right? Oh, yeah, that's right, the flagship, right? And so we see the correlations between that uh, information that came forth with that whistleblower and what our very own T.J. Morris has uh, shared in previous shows and will in the future about her experiences on a flagship as part of a of a joint U.S. extraterrestrial, um, what do you call it, venture, I'll call it venture, in defending the galaxy from these other beings, which are quite hostile, like, um, like the Klingons were initially, but even they became socialized and integrated into the Star Trek universe. Okay, I'm done. Next person. Thank you. you. Uh, I have to uh, take a moment with my husband, which will happen in our shows, folks, so uh, we can go over to uh, Javier next, and then uh, each of us, we're going to talk about, and I've got to go help him for a few minutes, so Javier, I need you to talk a little bit about the ESP part of this, where we're going with our uh, people are always wanting new things to do and talk about, especially at these conferences annually. And I'm going to bring that, Janet and Javier and Bill and Mika, and hopefully we're going to do one in Sacramento or somewhere in uh, 2016 to 2023. But while I go help my husband, Javier, I'll I'll come back and listen to the archive afterwards. And uh, weekly we'll have a meeting with these people, and we're going to form something really special. But it's also going to endure the time travel with Bill when it gets to him, and phenomenology, uh, which I love, all the things that I've been looking at my whole life, even though I've been on planet and off planet, not everybody had. And I had to keep it a secret. And my husband and I, when I got to know him, had the same secrets I did. And we sort of uh, repelled each other for a while, but President Reagan of the United States of America uh, bless his soul. He wanted to know more, and he and Tom and I got to work together doing these things. But what was unity was the ESP part and how they use that with the grays 
and the people like me and you, uh, but they can actually do it within a, usually a six foot radius of ESP and stuff. But hobby, just whatever you know, and then pass the stick, talking stick to Bill, and he'll talk a little okay. bit about the ESP thingy. And then uh, Mika, because we all have a sixth sense, we're all psychic, right. and we're going to blend all this. And Javier has a good idea that the UFO ET business and the psychic business goes together. So you know, just sort of what you talked about introducing yourself. So, And I've got to go do a few things, and then I'll be back. i got to go put him in bed. But okay. Javi, to you. Yeah, okay. just let me say a little bit about Star Trek. I'm glad that they had Star Trek because it did, it did pave the way. And it makes it easy because this was done so so many years back. <clears throat> so, and could you imagine when Star Trek, Star Trek first came out? We would, we thought that was the impossible. Now that we're in a different time zone, now it's not so impossible. Now, now we're understanding. The, they're kind of paving the way. They were just adjusting us to what's going to come ahead. Because you know they had the little the little transformer where they're the little communicators. Those were the cell phones. Now back then we didn't have those. We had those big blocks. So Star Trek, you could say it was way ahead of its time, and I'm glad that that was there, and a lot of people love Star Trek. They open a lot of doors for a lot of people, and I also can appreciate uh, T.J. Morris. She, she, she's so knowledgeable, so she's a professional in what she does, and her knowledge and understanding about psychic abilities, the paranormal, and the UFO stuff, so that's, you know, that's about that. But now that I want to talk about what we're trying to do at the conference is open up the conscious mind, expanding the mind. And, and, and I believe that's why I believe the UFO stuff, because I was involved in the UFO, but I also, I really gravitate to the people that do psychic abilities because we do have that psycho, uh, psychic ability. It's about just enhancing. I think every one of us does. But we we're not open. We have to open that channel up, and as, as you use more, you start you start defining it. It starts getting better. It gets sharper, and it, and it's it's about letting the fear letting the fear go, being in your power and understanding it. So you know, and I think consciousness is something so so wonderful because you open your mind and you can understand everything comes through. It, it's just like a painter when the painter comes up and uh, Bill can. Because of that, when he does it, you're in a different time zone. You you just kind of are in a different place when you're doing your paintings. It's a place of creativity, a place of love, and this is where you do your best work. It's just so that's what we're trying to do when we do the UFO conferences. Is trying to open people's minds, open up their psychic ability, helping them, connecting people together, understanding, having that love, passion, and peace, and calmness, and and, and support each other. The most important thing is there to support each other, and I think it all goes together because I'm really, I really have these abilities because of my UFO experience. But like me and the psychics, we can we'll tune in almost the same thing. And they go, "How do you do it?" I was I wasn't gifted with that. After I had my experience, I was able to do all these amazing different things. But like I said, not everybody has the same experiences. Some people come with different abilities. Some people come with different things. But I was just one of the fortunate ones that it opened up my conscious mind, and all of a sudden I started crying about, you know, I wasn't, I'm not one of those guys that cries about anything. So, but you know, what I mean, I, I also need to tap into my feminine side, you know what I mean? Because we all, you know, you have two sides. You have to, you have to have that balance. And I believe a guy should tap into his feminine side. There's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly okay. And and I'm able to do that. This is when you find synchronicity, balance is is tapping into both sides and being balanced. And that's why it's important to have these conferences because this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to raise the vibration, trying to balance people and, and, and have them open up their psychic abilities and enhance and support people and build people up and help people. This is why we do this. We, we don't, you know, uh, Janet, Bill, a lot of people that do it, we don't make a whole lot of money doing it. We just do it because we love to help people. We're people, persons. And we love other people, and we want, and we feel good when we can help. Speak, we feel great about that. Okay, Bill. Okay. Okay. You're yes. Uh, um, I think it was uh, you, Janet. You were didn't you mention um, out of body experiences earlier that that you've had those? Or I know I know TJ. Did. Well, I, I have um, had many uh, lifelong out of body experiences, but yes, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Well, that uh, you know. Like in, in basically to kind of continue the story I was telling earlier, you know, in the aftermath of that uh, of that incident with the barn, it seemed like 
not long after that, I started having what I would now call spontaneous out-of-body experiences. You know, they weren't a thing that I was actually necessarily controlling. It was like I couldn't, I couldn't just lay down and will myself out of my body. But, but instead, it just sort of seemed to just happen to me. You know, I would lay down, and I would find myself, you know, basically falling into a trance-like state. And then I would feel this incredible vibration, this this kind of tingling sensation that would basically begin at my feet and work its way up my body. And as it was doing so, it was it was like it was just building to a crescendo. And then in that last moment, as if uh, bursting from that that uh, that place we call the third eye, that 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 space between on our forehead between our eyes, that that. Uh, just bursting forth from there, and I would find myself just, you know, from a point of view, I seeing, you know, not not from within my body, but but outside of my body, and um, it was very. Uh, I didn't know what to think of it at the time it was happening. You know, I was like, no one ever talks about this kind of thing, so I was very quiet <laughs> and never never really told anyone about it. Or for years, in fact, you know, I was I just kept having this this experience, and I never really went very far from my body. In fact, I think the furthest I ever went was like to an adjacent room. I I, I was able to to. And I remember one really vivid moment when it was as if I was standing in the doorway of the bedroom where I was laying on my bed, and at that time period, I had this uh, this poster that I had stuck on the ceiling directly above my bed so that I could lay there and gaze upon it, you know, because I liked this poster. It was a very uh, psychedelic kind of poster. And um, and that was back in the 60s, you know, so <laughs> I was a child of the 60s. And so uh, that um, I, I remember having this, it was, it was the most bizarre out-of-body experience because it was like, it was like a flash, you know. I was there in the doorway, looking at that poster from that angle, and then right back to my body, looking straight up at it, and then back and forth like that. So I was it was as if I was looking at that poster from two points of views almost simultaneously. And it was very strange. I mean, it was like nothing like I'd ever experienced before. And I didn't know how to relate to this. I didn't know what was happening to me. I, I, I thought, you know, maybe I was going crazy. I didn't know what it was. You know, and here I was just like 11, 12, you know, and then into my teens, and I was having these experiences and not knowing how to relate to them at all. Couldn't tell any of my friends about it because I figured they'd probably just think I was crazy. And finally, I found a book on, and in fact, the title of the book was simply ESP. <laughs> and you know, and it wasn't uh-huh. an abbreviation for especially in this case. It was about extrasensory perception. So, and it had a chapter devoted to out of body experiences or astral projection, as they called it. And and I read that, and I was like, oh, this is it. This is what is happening to me. And and I finally, that was the beginning of when I finally realized I'm not the only one in the world that this is happening to. You know, <laughs> it is happening to other people too. And. And that was a great relief, you know. As a teenager, I, uh, you know, I guess I, I needed that that confirmation that you know that it wasn't that I was crazy or that it wasn't that there was something wrong with me, but that there was that this was a, an experience that a lot of other people have too. And um, and so that was important at that time for me to to be able to uh, to feel that you know I'm not alone. And um, and I finally confided in, in this one friend of mine about it because he was very interested in, in extrasensory perception as well, and um, and it was a, it was a great relief to finally have someone that I could even talk to about it, you know. But uh, as as time went by, you know that 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 gift seemed to change over time. It, it transitioned, I think, into something else, and. Uh, and now what I feel like that what people call remote viewing or I, I think of it more in terms of accessing information from the Akashic Record, um, as, as Edgar Cayce uh, often spoke of, 
he referred to the Akashic Record as uh, as his source of, of of information when he would go into this trance like state and uh, and and uh, basically uh, sort of not quite a waking dream, but you know, I mean, I'm sure you're you're familiar, Janet, with, with Edgar Casey. Um, and, oh yeah. And if if, yeah, if, if yeah, so so you know what I'm talking about. That that that's basically he would go into this trance like state and he would be able to see things that uh uh-huh. that otherwise uh you wouldn't be able to see. Uh, and um he had several insights into uh, Atlantis and you know, so as well as, you know, stuff both in the future and in the past. And that that seems to be what I when I when I meditate and go into this this trance like state I I access information of that sort, you know. It, it, it's not like uh, just a personal thing. It's more like the currents of history. I can see various things about that, you know. It, it's not just uh, looking at um, the Akashic record of an individual, but more like the Akashic record of, of human history, and, and not just human history. Uh, I've seen things from all over the universe. Uh, but, you know, how can I really be sure it's true? You know, I can't. <laughs> I can, uh, some of it I can confirm. You know, there are times when I can find things, see things, and then so research it and see if I can find out other information about it and, and indeed uh, find bits of confirmation. But uh, but there's a lot of things that, that are still kind of, you know, unconfirmable, you might say. So, um but I, I still have faith that there's there's something here going on here that I am accessing information that is, in some way, valid. And um, and that was another one of the things we were talking about with time travel. Uh, before doing uh, the work on on my my latest book, I I did a lot of research of that sort, you know, as well. And um, I, I I really do feel it's that the Atlanteans that there was there is a basis to that myth that concept of of Atlantis and a great cataclysm occurred which uh which basically destroyed that culture but i do believe that before that culture was destroyed they achieved a technology that we would call time travel and that some of them escaped the cataclysm through time and um and that would be from what i can see the beginning, the first example of of time travel, of human time travel, anyway. Now, you know, no doubt ETs have, have achieved that you know, on their own way, uh, separately. But uh, but I do believe that, uh, that so far as human uh, uh, use of that kind of technology, that uh, that the Atlanteans are the first example, and. Um, there have been other instances since then. I've isolated five different. Um, what we would call different types of time travel that uh and, and there's a possible sixth one from the far future but see they're not all from the have future because the Atlanteans are from the past have What's you that? had any conversations with Andrew Bashago about the different time travel techniques he goes into Yes I, I am familiar with his Yeah the you know the stuff with the Montauk uh, various Montauk uh, work uh, and again, that, that's more than one technology going on there, but uh, but a lot of it is all is based on um, uh, a similar technology. But um, yeah, and then also um, it's very probable the Germans were and uh, the Nazi Germans were indeed experimenting with that with the Glock. Um, that appears to to have been a, a, well by our current standards, <laughs> you might call it a primitive form. Uh, of time travel technology, um, but that d- was further developed. Uh, I-, I believe that also secretly Tesla did some work on this here in the, in the United States, and uh, was very right. probably involved uh, with with a lot of that kind of stuff uh, with early development. I, I, right now, I do believe we, indeed the government does have, uh, or, or black shadow government, whatever you want to call it, they have time travel technology right now being used in this country. And indeed, several right. countries around the world, but this country definitely has it already. And um, it's highly possible that uh, uh, not all the Nazis were eliminated at the end of World War II, 
And I do believe oh, it's yes, secret. Yes, whole project paper in Argentina, in particular, uh, yeah. Hmm? Well, let's give uh, Pete a chance to answer that question about uh, ESP, uh, extrasensory perception and psychic sure. abilities. And then I will mm-hmm. take a turn, and then we'll go back to another question. Mika, okay. are right, you there? I'm back. That was Project yes. Paper. Yes, I'm here. Well, yeah. Well, let me. Let's go ahead, Mika. Share about. Go ahead, Mika. Your turn. Oh. Okay. Um. You know, I. I mean, it's it's kind of funny because I. Uh, um. I. I also experienced this. Uh. uh uh, removing what, what? What did you say that the the uh, uh, um, uh, the it's the uh, um, your spirit will remove from your body mm-hmm. out of that, body out of right out of body right. experience uh, out of body experience yeah out of body experience yeah I had that uh, almost every night when I was about fourteen years old and it's. It was it was not prison in the beginning because I mean I didn't know what's going on and uh, um, and uh, and then I also um, um, after after you know so many I mean it, it, it's just it's it's like a ghost it's like a, almost like a to me it was just a ghost I, I thought I was dealing with a ghost that I would see um, this this hand will come out from the wall and then trying to pull me into the the wall and uh, um, you know always trying to hold on to something uh, you know uh, uh, edge of the bed I'm like no I don't want to go I don't want to go wherever you want to take me I don't want to go <laughs> but um, that happened so many nights and uh, um, I I thought about it I thought about you know. Um, let this thing take and see if I'm gonna flow into the the universe and see if I can you know go wherever. But uh, I, I, my concern was that can I come back to my body again after that trip? Yeah. Right. So that was that was always my concern, and I I I wasn't sure, um, you know, and what if I can come back because I don't know any techniques, I don't know anything about this this you know what's going on on this. Every night, when I, as soon as I try to go to sleep, and then this this whatever thing is trying to pull my, you know, um, energy out, and and I can see my body totally laying on my bed, and uh, and then also I had this uh, um, some other spirit that came uh, visit me, and it was it was very. I mean, I, I mean, it, it wasn't human at all. I mean, it, you know, whatever, I mean, whatever the thing moves, and I can feel the energy. Whatever this thing moves, then the door will open, and uh, and then it doesn't walk like a human. I mean, it moves like slowly moves, and then come to the door, and then it opens, and then and then it came to me eventually, and uh, um, but. Uh, um, that was just really creepy experience that I had, and then after uh, since then, then I can feel the uh, the sixth sense and um, the the able to hear, the, you know, feel something else. Then I mean, the, rather than it's a human um, feeling. I mean, I, I don't I don't know. It's, it's a spirit, but I, I mean, I, I now that I know that it's a spirit that I can feel and then I can see and then I, sometimes I can see the future too, and then it just it's yeah. I mean, it's 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 great to know. I mean, you know, if you if you think about it, it's like, hey, you know, you can see the future. That's great. But you know, I mean, it's it's a kind of like a broken image that um, I have to figure it out after so many months and um, sometimes the year to figure out. Okay, so that's what the spirit was showing me two years ago or three years ago, and I actually predicted a few of my big events in my life that Spirit showed me about three years prior and uh, exactly, you know, uh, what they, they predict me and just happened. And so, but, yeah, that's that's my experience, I guess. <laughs> Great. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, I'll do a sharing and then back to TJ. So, um yeah, it turned into out of body experiences, but I've had a lot of uh, extra ESP type communication, telepathic communication with extraterrestrials. 
And it was very interesting because I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> but um, we are. We are capable of having this type of communication with extraterrestrials. I think it's something that's within each and every one of us. It's one of those, uh, the DNA strands has been shut off, and so we think that we are not psychic, that we're not able to do these type of things, and yet we are waking up and realizing and some of us are actually able to turn on our DNA and make it happen. So when I had contact with extraterrestrials, I'd say 99% of all communication was telepathic. And then the out-of-body experiences, I've been having them since I was very, very young. And there was nobody to talk to about it, of course. I just had to, you know, enhance myself. I found the Robert Monroe information somewhere back in time, well, 20 years ago. And when I found the Monroe Institute and their information, I thought that was incredible and I was very elated. And it's nice when you get validated by the information you find. Okay, back to TJ. Okay, well, thank you, Janet. Yes, and folks, let me take me off. I was listening to all of you guys, and I feel like using the power of three, the body, mind, spirit, conscious, subconscious, superconscious, and gradually people will be more comfortable with discussing all levels, and I think the final frontier, like I mentioned, breakthrough, and I have a different, uh, I don't know how to do this Microsoft thing, or I'd pull up some information, which Jan with the backstory on breakthrough, but uh, Javier Sandoval and I were discussing, that's a good word, we like the word breakthrough, and we hope to have a future conference with discussing, because you can use beta, alpha, uh, beta, Alpha, Theta, Delta, Gamma, and then my husband, after five, we discussed Sigma and Dow, the seven levels. And we basically can discuss this in quantum physics and with extraterrestrial UFO phenomenology because so many people don't understand every level of who they are and their existence. In the sixth sense level, we're talking about many different things and much, much education, much, much communication and information. And we all tend in this particular uh, era of time discuss the ascension age, which is what the extraterrestrials gave me. And this is going to be Ascension Cosmos Internet Radio for the reason we're going to start leveling up. And just like we have the many dimensions, we have the uh, various levels of our minds, and we're going to start communicating more of that to many more people in this awakened state or this ascension cosmos state of the existence in our reality, both that in the body physical, that in the mind, which you've heard us talk about, and that of the spirit. And we're going to start using this power of three, the body, the mind, and the spirit. And hopefully in our future workshops or groups, so we can do Google uh, groups or I don't forget what they call them on Google, but we can, even the five of us could have, uh, is it five? Yeah, five of us could have shown up tonight. And while we're doing this show, you could have seen us on Google. Or There's different, many, many things out there we're not even accustomed to using yet, but we're going not just from the mechanics and the nuts and bolts, like for uh, quite a few years since I've been on the earth and discussed the ET, alien ET UFO community, we have grown beyond MUFON, Mutual UFO Network, beyond MUFON, and beyond all those. And this is a huge industry. And this radio show, there's going to be many, many more podcasts, many more Internet archiving uh, locations. And that's why I wanted to grow my T.J. Mars ET Cosmos Radio into the Cosmos Radio organization to work with more radio hosts and connect more people in our websites because this is a wonderful time to be alive. And my company, ACAR, for once many years, because I had to keep everything secret, was assured confidential investigative reports, which I worked as an investigator with legal attorneys. But now we're talking about projects, and what Bill was mentioning about the Germans was Project Paperclipped. And uh, just like a paper clip on a piece of paper, and Werner von Braun, after World War II, uh, during the Hitler era, taking over the world, the extraterrestrials were involved. 
but they're, uh, there's, it's like the prime directive, and they really don't get involved. But at that point, they did have observers, and my husband met one, and it was, uh, he just looked, I think he said around his 40s, because he's met people off planet. It's just, this is going to get very complicated because of the way we're taught to think inside the matrix. But for many, many people, they don't understand anything except what we were taught, and rightfully so, growing up in America with food, clothing, shelter, and that we go to school and we have jobs and we go off and we become educated and we go to church on Sundays and we live this lifestyle and we want work towards the American dream. Well, now the world's caught up with the Internet. It really did change with men going into space. And, of course, the Russians get credit for first, and then we knew we had to play catch-up during the Kennedy era and go to space. And my story coming into this life had to do with our former worlds and our universes and the cosmos, including Mars, that was once a planet that was inhabited just like this one. There was a habitable zone, and it got knocked off course from cataclysmic rock. And so I came in with some of these memories as a child and then shown my people that I told you about starting, where were you when your big light bulb went off from your first UFO experience? Mika wasn't here yet, so I strongly recommend, uh, Mika, you go back and listen to the beginning. But we're all coming okay. full circle. You know, we're coming full circle to learn who we are as individuals, but also our souls go out in groups. And we terraform planets, for one thing. We go to other places in space. And these are things people are going to start having the big aha about. That It's not just about being here on this working planet for our body and our minds and our spirit, but we all are important, we all serve a purpose, and we're all going to learn to use our sixth sense and ESP and things that we're calling in this era and time paranormal and phenomenology as we're breaking through, just like we're learning about the oceans on the planet and all these ancient wisdom, new thought teachings, ancient wisdom with all the old stories, we're going to find out, yes, there's a lot of ancient history, but also we're going to be creating the future, and we're going to have time travel stories. And Aerocop, with our group, will be for those that want to do education, research, association, community online people, and here you can work with Ascension, the word Ascension, raising consciousness, raising your awareness, raising your spirit out of your body and your mind. And we're going to work with the cosmos universally in all my contacts in the cosmos. And we hope that you'll find yours too. And hopefully in the future I can show you some pictures of the spacecraft if you haven't seen of your own. And my husband's drawn the ones we use off planet. And I can maybe have him present. I'm hoping a weekend in St. Louis possibly in June if we make it that far and his health uh, prevails. I'd like him to show up for a very good gathering, probably only by uh, invitation only uh, because we're in a galaxy alliance and only a few people because there's an enormous amount of people in the cosmos. But those that work down here and have been observing since World War II, a lot of the people got stuck in time, including a lot of who we call the world leaders, that did not learn, they grew up thinking that they were doing whatever they're going to do in political parties and put positions of wealth and positions of leadership and authority. But, you know, now the world is understanding we're going to a global situation, and there's going to be people on both sides of that equation in what we call a dualistic society here, just like they do positive and negative and push and pull and sun and moon and light and dark. And we're just going to get organized where we're going to be so positive that we're going to be able to go forward and make these classes and seminars and our books and tapes and material published and we're going to keep moving forward with these groups. So Janet and I are providing Aquarian Radio, which is being recorded as an archive, T.J. Morris E.T. Radio, which is now E.T. Mar- T.J. Morris, which is my name, my brand, with E.T. Radio, and Cosmos, the word Cosmos, because we're branching out with Javier Sandoval in Sacramento, Silicon Valley, San Jose area, and Mika, our newest yes. member, she offered some new energy last night. She was very excited. She felt called by spirit. She's connected, as you can see. And so a lot of us are going to be finding our spiritual gathering place for gr- private and group counseling if we set those up, classes, seminars, and 
an annual event, at least a minimum. And Janet and, and I have been talking for years of doing this quarterly, and now Hobby came along and suggested the same thing. And Bill knows one of his callings from the beginning – between 2012 and 13 was to get with Eddie, and uh, he had done a Star Trek convention, so he had that energy. So we're all actually anchoring in energy to try to have gathering. Now, we may have one in Sacramento. We may have one in St. Louis, Louisville, or Tennessee, or maybe just get all to meet together. But these are the five main players for 2016 right here tonight that can make this happen. And we may bring on another person. So we'll have three and three, and it just depends. But right now I know Janet and Javier just got from a place in space called a uh, – it may or may not have been the exact time to introduce some of the information I have, but a wonderful spiritual gathering place to work with the power of three, three, six, nine, which is three, and then two threes, and then three threes. So we've got five people tonight. And we've had uh, Tommy Hawk's blood, but he is now working with Carrie Cassidy, so we're going to drop that person. So it leaves an open spot out there. So we're going to have a board of advisors, which probably will be these five people here, for the beginning connection of synchronicity to come up with people they think may want to come here and help us weekly. And Janet has a lady that she suggested, Karen, which we call Casey, Casey for Karen Christine Patrick. And she's been working with an astronaut to do his books, but she's talking about us meeting her in Albuquerque, but we're not sure yet if it's going to be November. So, folks, this is your official invitation to join us. And we're going to come to the last few minutes of our show for us taping, and we can each share a little bit of what we would like to see, uh, how we can come together. And we're asking people to bring two more people to our organization, and that is uh, tonight we have our Aquarian Radio Network, we have TJMRC T Radio Network, and we've been working together for three years. Now we're going to go up a level with Javier Sandoval to Cosmos Radio Organization with an office in Sacramento, which Janice's is in her home, mine's in my home, Javier's will be in his home, and then we'll work together to form other things with Mika and with Bill. Bill's in Cordova. Now, Bill has been working, so you can meet us, with uh, the mid-UFO, uh, not UFO Con, but it does play into it, but the mid-Con 30, I think it's 34 or 35, and uh, we've just got a few minutes here. So, Janet, would it be okay for us to each connect a little bit of how we're going to gather uh, for people? Because ESP, Paranormal... Bruce Cunningham, if you know, a couple of nights ago came on, and he really wants us to show up, be interactive, show up in person. And he's doing out of country in the Pacific Rim tours to show you pyramids. But there's going to be something to bring us a gathering. And Janet and Javier just experienced it. Uh, Bill, me, and Mika missed it. But uh, Janet, I don't know this last few minutes, but we need to share something. And Javi and Bill. How we can do this, and will we do this weekly? And this is a Wednesday, because this is sort of Janet's night to help this ancient mystery, new thought, and the Ascension Center. You know, we're going to ascribe to the highest standards of excellence and the uplifting of humankind by providing spiritual and educational awareness. But, uh, Janet, do you want to keep meeting, having panel discussions on Wednesday, and ask people to come and join us and bring two more people? How do you see this? I'm open to sharing uh, how it shows up. So Wednesday's a pretty good day. Uh, in February, I'll be going to the UFO IUFO con. So, what I see is that we have a group that, that if you know someone needs to go do something else, someone else can fill in and be like on coast to coast AM. They George Norrie sometimes has a uh, backup host. The other thing we can do is uh, pre-record shows. We can upload them at certain times and have a a huge archive of shows, including creating uh, YouTubes. I'd like us to get more into doing some video as well as the auditory and perhaps illustrate what we're talking about with some, um, you know, art of some kind, like Bill has his beautiful art. So I'm here to collaborate and co-create. My ultimate goal, goal is to 
create a, a world where everybody can, you know, enjoy life, the pursuit of happiness. Not just the pursuit, but actually experiencing happiness. So I'm gang. Uh, Wednesday's good for me, although it may not always work if I, you know, have to go do something on the mainland. And same with hobbies. I'm sure doing your conferences. So it's good to have a team. We'll, we'll either pre-record shows for when we're gone or have other uh, people be able to come on board to continue the shows going. My, my idea is that we go seven days a week, at least uh, two hours a day. But with our two networks, we could go um, four hours a day because you have two hours and I have two. So let's figure this out, okay? Thank you. Yeah, you know, I think sometimes okay. we should just, you know what I like about this uh, Cosmo Radio, that it's interactive. We get the people out there that are listening, we get you guys' opinion and see what you think, and you give us your feedback because you you guys make it strong. When you guys are listening, it just gets bigger and more solid. So it's always good to understand what, what we're doing and, and, and get feedback so that way we know. So I think, I think it would be good to take a call, maybe take a call, and to listen to somebody and see what 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 their input is, or if they have any questions, or anybody that they, that we've talked, they want to ask somebody a question here. I think it would be a good time to ask that. Okay, Bill, you your think? input for this Wednesday night thing. Yes, I I agree with with Javier about that that having people call in and <clears throat> giving the opportunity for people to call in and and uh, and interact with us. That I think is a uh, an important aspect of, uh, of you know, knowing what's, what's of most interest to people and knowing, uh, you know, like have, having that feedback, that really is uh, something that, uh, that I think can help us grow. And, uh, indeed, uh, Wednesday nights are, well, they're not always going to be as great good for me. Other other nights of the week, definitely, uh, for me, might be better. But uh, once, I've, once I've finished... Uh, Healing up, I, you know. Like I say, I've been having a little bit of a illness problem lately. But once I finish healing up, I'm going to be getting back to choir practice at church. So Wednesday nights when we have choir practice. But um, uh, the other, uh, you know, like Saturdays and Sundays, those are going to be days that are, that are going to be easier for me to fit into my schedule. But uh, but that's just uh, you know, where I am personally at this time. But uh, but I definitely want to continue uh, my involvement with uh, with as many of the different shows as as, uh, as I fit in. <laughs> okay, yeah, we may switch you back to your Sunday show, and uh, our our newest partner here, our associate as an agent, consultant, or organizer, all three in the radio business. She was really happy to be on last night. We loved her energy. And she connected with me doing uh, readings. And believe it or not, folks, I, I keep up with my statistics. But for three years, my numbers are great, but they're even better when I do readings. And, of course, you realize in the last year my husband's become much more dependent on me because he's lost his leg and had five surgeries five weeks just to save his life one week after another they don't usually do one week after week after week after week because they were all five major surgeries where he lost a toe and he lost a leg and now his health is is very and he's on dialysis and and kid he's lost his kidneys and it's a very sad time for me in life but this is what's going to keep me going is being in touch with those off planet on planet plus source which is all three different power of three and so the here now and the past and the future all comes together for me, but I have these abilities and these gifts. We all have them. Some just come in with more memories than others. Some may be older souls than others. And these are things that we need to keep going with because we're sharing information and communication and making the world a better place. And these these things we're going to meet, to, we hope to meet. I've never met Janet in all these years, not met Javi, and he's new in my life. And then Mika, but Mika... Do you think you can yeah. show up and help us uh, okay. do uh, radio weekly on some night sure. or something or here? Yeah. Okay. That's Great. Awesome. Well, if you can show up and hold the energy and people will get to know you. And, uh, okay. you know, it's just like folks during the week when we do readings. Those bring in more people than anything. And from our readings, we can ask them, well, would you like to be with our 
psychic group. We have ascensionpsychics.com, and we have Ericop, if, you know, with the ones of Education Research Association and those that like to research and all that. We have Alien Contact. And Janet and I have decided that we're doing Saturdays for Alien Contact Organization. That one takes no brain power. We've just set up Saturday with a gentleman, Richard, and I can't remember his name. Uh, he, it was his idea. To, he saw one of my books I wrote and uh, suggested I do that show. And Richard, and uh, it was very hard on his time schedule. I think Janet and I had to do it at 10 p.m. or something because he's in U.K., and anyway, the time schedule wasn't working, and he understands he's still a good friend. But uh, Sundays we can go back to doing more uh, world universal life uh, metaphysics with Ace Metaphysics on Sunday. Tuesdays I'll do reading, and Janet and I, Janet does a show right now for experiencers on Friday, and Hobby said he'd pick up Friday on our schedule uh, to bring people on, like I've done guests and interviews, and he said he'd co-host Friday. And Janet, you have a co-host. Is Karen your ho- Is it Thursday or Friday you do a show without us? Or we, or we could blog talk. What do they call that? Syndicate. But do you do Thursday or Friday, Janet, on what our I calendar? Would ideally like to do, I, uh, what I'd ideally like to do is do them back-to-back so that we're not, or else simulcast so that we're not in competition with each other time-wise. The reason why I brought other people on is for like five or six months, you were busy with palm and all with surgery. So nature at horrors of right, acting. Right. Karen and Reverend John Polk came in, and we started filling up. Because I, for the first few months when you weren't available, I just kind of did nothing, you know. Maybe I still kept my... Um, <laughs> Bless your heart. I did. I just like, okay, so finally... It was like I thought you were just being gone for a couple of weeks, and then it was like months, and so I didn't. Do. I had no idea. Parents, it stretched out. You had no idea, and it's okay. It all worked out fine. So now we have two other team members, and then the, of course they're bringing other people in. So ultimately, I I hope that we create a schedule together. Like I said, we have four hours of programming we can do per day. We can go back to back and uh, create shows and. Uh, you know, we'll just have to talk about that after, not, not I don't want to do business type stuff on the air, but we will talk about creating a master schedule. And there are other people, like I said earlier, I'm training some other people to be hosts. And we'll have a training class with them so perhaps they can even keep the board running when we're venturing around the world doing our conferences. And that's my vision. And, um, I don't think it's that difficult to train somebody how to do the board, and we'll have these people on our team. So we'll just do like uh, Coast to Coast and all these other uh, radio networks like Revolution and Inception, and there's other radio networks, and eventually we'll go 24-7. But we're beginning with <laughs> two to four hours per day every every week, and I think it's a good start. Okay. Well, now that gives everybody, if you'd like to tune in, that's good. That's good input, everybody. And now you can see how, what you brought to the table. It'll be here for archives forevermore. And we'll listen and see how far we've come in three years and where we're going in the future, 2016 to 2023. And I think that's a good concentration of roughly eight years, the many years for us is what we're saying. Sixth Sun, Fifth Earth, and what all that means to you in the new history that we are responsible for writing. <laughs> and we can say what we are alternative uh, inception, but, you know, we're Internet radio. We are those up and coming. And a lot of the main radio shows, even the one here where I live, he, I was doing this, and now he's going, hmm. And another friend of mine helped him hook up and learn how to do from his radio station, Internet radio. So he's got his own thing going, and even in the last three years, now they're doing some paranormal shows. So paranormal and spirituality is getting to be very big on many regular radio stations. Now, mind you, they still do music and all that, but this is things for you guys to look forward on Blog Talk Radio, and many of you are Blog Talk Radio very loyal people, which Javier discovered when he listened to our show again today and heard last night and said, wow, some of these people uh, look at blog talk and they're regular blog talk people, and, and they came to your show. So 
there's all kind of ways we can help each other and learn. And Javier's going to uh, learn all this. And Mika would like you to learn how to see from the beginning. And everybody is important, and everybody offers a part of the piece of the puzzle, which Janet and I and Javier and Bill and Mika are all a part of. So thank you, everybody. We appreciate right, Aquarian you. Radio and Janet and keeping the ball rolling and this one rolling and, and the new one we're building even bigger to be on more and longer with uh, Javier out of the wonderful Silicon Valley and uh, bringing us another piece of the puzzle and how we can do more. So Janet's got a good idea, and it sounds like she's very she has a vision of us having our own 24-hour organization. So that's sort of a wrap, everybody. I think we did good for our first let night. Me, let me let me let me just say one thing. I think you bet. The, like you said, the power of three. It's all about synchronicity. So we'll all get together and we'll schedule it and like a fine. You know, we have to just put everybody's time in whatever he's going to talk. So we'll all be synchronized, and that it makes it a lot easier and easier for the listeners too. So that way they know what we're talking about, and you know what you know what time we're going to be on and all that. But we'll schedule all that. We'll get together and we'll synchronize everything. Synchronicity is always good, right, Janet? That sounds good. That sounds good. And we do want people to be uh, maybe the last or calling in or whatever. But we're going to learn how to do all this. So Janet and uh, everybody, everybody, all of your opinions count. And that's what Janet and I and Javi and Bill and now Mika, Mika's new, and we'll all figure yep. this all out. So you're you're all invited to help figure this out. <laughs> good. And we'll try to make it bigger and better and maybe have some conferences together. So Thank you, everybody that's been loyal to us for all these years. We know who you are, well, sort of, but we would like to know more about you. And some of you usually show up in the in the uh, chat room. And I'm sorry that a lot of you aren't finding out on Facebook, but my, I've got so many Facebook things that now Blog Talk's all confused, or Facebook is, and they didn't connect me to my Facebook tonight. So now I noticed a huge difference, folks. Social media is very important, just like connecting your Skype with your Facebook account, with your websites, and all those little uh, social media things you see with Facebook. So please like us, and that's TJ Mars ET Radio and Aquarian Radio with Blog Talk. And please go to the front. Welcome to the Total Wireless Store, where total confidence awaits. My wife loves when I DJ our car rides, but overages get in the way of my groove. Don't worry. You got this with Total Wireless. Right now, get 50% more data when you bring your number to any qualified service plan starting at $35. All in the nation's best 4G LTE network. Wiki, wiki, 50% more. Now go find that perfect DJ name. New York. Discover the Total Wireless stores and get total confidence. The latest phones, the best network, all at great prices. Ends January 2nd, 2019. $35 plans and up. Excludes ports from Trackphone Wireless, Inc. brands. Terms at TotalWireless.com.